Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. It is Christian here and you're tuned in for more of my two cents. Uh, okay, so it's the holiday season. I think, I mean, as soon as November 1st came, I felt, which I think is hilarious, Mariah Carey, I felt her tuning up. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. okay, sis was ready for the all I want for Christmas. And then to see her on that exercise bike singing, it's time, child took me out. Come through marketing genius, okay? Um, but yes, the holiday season is upon us. So that means that straight after October 31st came Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And Thanksgiving is in between Christmas. If you know, you know. <laughs> All right, so I am Christian Sergeant, and we're here to share some of my two cents on things that relate to life, religion, spirituality, marriage, family, all of those things. Friendship, it's it's just about to be a good talk today because I'm going to talk about something that I love and I live on a regular, entrepreneurship, okay? But before I do that, let me go ahead and welcome and invite you to join the Two Cents crew. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, then hey, y'all, hey, thank y'all for tuning in for the video today, okay? Y'all are family, and I'm so glad to have you guys a part of what we do over on my part and my side of the YouTube uh, community, okay? Because... YouTube is out here doing some of the things, and I just want to stay on the right side of those, okay? And we shall. So today I'm going to be talking about how I knew entre entrepreneurship was for me. Um, I've had several businesses. I've had a lot of businesses, okay? I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I'm not serial successful in all of those, but I am a, a serial entrepreneur. So I had um, a women's online shoe store first which is so funny because it was my husband's first logo and it was called stilts boutique um and the shoe was the s it was so fresh and that idea was given to me in a dream um a high heel shoe was the s so you had like the uh, anyway the shoe was the s and then it was stilts with the z because i walk in five six inch heels for a living okay i don't now but i did and i can still okay i'll get you together honey all right um and so it was like walking in stilts people used to always always comment on my heels and my shoes um before i had kids and so uh that was my first business stilts shoe shoes and it was an online business and then it became a physical location and i had a clothing and a shoe store with a family member um we ain't gonna talk about that. That was a very dark time in my life. Um, don't go into business with your family. Um, but we're not here for that. What we are here for is the entrepreneurship journey. So I had a shoe store and a clothing boutique, and then I would go on to have a um soup business where I actually made soups and delivered them. Um, it was called Southern Charm Soups. Yes, yeah, Southern Charm Soups. And it was delicious. I made Zupa Toscana. I made gumbo on Fridays. I made chili and I made chicken and rice soup. And you can go on my website, order the soups in either a, an 8 ounce, a 16 ounce, or 32 ounce family size. Y'all, it was delicious. And then it was no more. And then I had Southern Charm Home Co., which was a home decor business and interior decorating company. And so I did that for all of six or seven months, child. And then nothing and so i enjoyed doing that that was cute and that was fun i designed a couple of i did some interior designing for a couple of people virtually and physically which i thought was dope because i'm like dang i'm kind of innovative out here offering you know virtual home decor and this was before it was a thing like this was like in 2016 it may have been a thing then but i don't think it was popular i was literally giving people consultations while they sh you know, show me their home and or send me pictures of their living room and I would tell them what to buy, send them links, or they would have a budget and I would buy it and just ship it to them and tell them where to place it in their home or their room or their office. Y'all, your girl has always been about the bin. Um, and then what was the one? Um, what's that all of them? Shoes, soups, homes. Shoes, soups, homes. Shoes, soups, homes. I think that was all of them. I think that was all of them. And then now I have uh, my baby, uh, which will be my first time ever mentioning the name of my business on this platform, um, Vicky Cakes Pancake Mix. Oh, I kind of, uh, I don't, I don't like 
mixing business with personal. So that's why I never mention my business. And I think that's as far as I'm going to go. But it is a pancake mix business that is based off of my mother Vicky's 40 year uh, family recipe. Um, and yeah, it's the most successful business that I've ever had. Um, and I'm super proud of it. I'm super grateful. And I know that it's my purpose. And it's one of those kind of things that I flow in effortlessly. So I don't have to force anything about it. I didn't really have to learn anything new to accomplish it. But all of the growth and the journey up until this point has been amazing. And I definitely have been able to put more of myself into this brand than anything else I've done in the past. So I'm definitely excited about that. But that's just some backstory and background on my entrepreneurial um, experience. My husband has way more entrepreneurial experience than I do. But uh, in a nutshell, I want to share why and how I knew that entrepreneurship was for me. Because this is a big conversation and a lot of people are advocating and pushing entrepreneurship out there as the main way for people to uh, detach from so the societal systems. In corporate America, the 9 to 5, and take on you know, a business. And I'm just here to say that entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart and it's not for everyone. Okay. You should not jump into it just haphazardly and without thought or plan. Please know what you're doing. Please know why you're doing it. And please know who you plan to serve while you're doing it. Okay. That's what we'll give for this today. Um, but yeah, entrepreneurship is not something that should be taken lightly but it's something that you should enter into understanding that it is for you and you plan on sticking it out. And I am not talking about a hustle. I am talking about a journey, a business, a company, generational wealth, right? Long-term, something that's able to be acquired, something that prevents, well, uh, something that presents you with income and revenue to take care of your lifestyle, your family, your future, your desires, not a hustle. Okay, a hustle will go from here to there everywhere. What I just listed before, those were hustles. I had hustle behavior with those other companies. This right here, I don't play. I don't play. I protect my, my brand and my company every day. Okay, I do not play about my company at all. So this is heart, soul, and future generation on swole. Okay, um, but let's get into the points of how I knew that entrepreneurship was for me. It may be a great guide for you. Some of these points you may identify with. I didn't like working for managers who abuse power. I actually don't like being around anyone who abuses power. Cannot stand it. This is why I say what I say and I do what I do here on my two cents, especially towards pastors and, and religious figures and leaders. I do not like people who abuse and misuse and misrepresent, rep, misrepresent their intent for people who are under their leadership. I do not like it. I will talk to you about it. I will speak to you directly about it. I will bring it to your attention. I'll call you out on it. I do not like it. This was the number one thing that let me know that entrepreneurship was for me. You are not about to play in my face because you're a manager and think I'm just going to let you do it because I need a check. No, I'm going to check you. And if you have a problem with me, we can go to HR together. All right. Okay. The next thing that let me know that entrepreneurship was for me, I did my being micromanaged. I don't like you checking up on me to check on me to see what I'm doing and how I did it and none of that. If you give me um, a, a task, if there's something for me to do, if I know my job description, let me do it. And if I don't do it or I don't do it well, then you can come on over. Okay. But micromanaging is something that I do not like. And it seems that people who are often in power and have like complex, you know, com com certain complex issues about themselves, they like to overcompensate and micromanage so it seems like they're in control. And when we're all adults in a work setting, that doesn't work for me. We're not kids. You don't have to come check on me to make sure I'm not smearing Vaseline on my eyebrows. Leave me alone so I can be productive, okay? That was a, a big thing for me. Next up, I didn't like explaining myself to people. And I still don't. I do not like giving explanations for things. Now, I am a very detailed person. I can tell you line upon line, precept upon precept, why I did what I did, especially if it's marketing or branding and it's a strategy. I love explaining those things because it gets my blood boiling about my purpose and what I do with so much joy and clarity to get to the end result, right? 
But when we come, when it comes to the workforce in, in corporate America, it became annoying that I would have to continue to explain myself or a um, uh, 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 give. Uh, what, give an account, if you will, give an account for what I did or why I did that or who told me to do it or where I saw this at or where. And it's just like the feeling of being in the principal's office all the time and having to like break stuff down. Well, why did you put these notes in here? Or why did you do this? Or this customer said that. Da, 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 da. OK, but did it get solved? Right. Or Or is it a problem? And then when it's a no, it's like, well, what do you want from me? What you want? Why we got to explain everything? We're trained to do what we do. And if we do it well, we're, what do you want? So I don't like explaining myself. I just don't. I don't like to. Maybe it's personality. I don't care to explain myself to people. Um, next up, I wasn't a silent sufferer like others. I talked about that with the, the managers or leadership that abuses power. I do not like keeping my mouth closed and I don't keep my mouth closed when people are out of order and they are usurping their power or they're being rude, disrespectful or anything like that. There's no need for you to mistreat people. There's no need for you to look down on people, talk down to people or talk about people to other workers or associates. I don't like that. You're not going to get me on that boat with you again, even if, my check is on the line. So shall yours be because we are both going to HR. Don't do it around me because I'm going to tell on you or I'm going to call you out on it. And that's something that started when I was younger. Um, I've never liked teachers who were mean or uh, uh, what's that word when they have favorites in, in, in students and things like that. I didn't like that. If I noticed it, I called it out. And if I didn't call it out to the uh, teacher, I called it out to my mom and then we'll let her handle it. Favoritism. I didn't, I don't like favoritism. Don't do that. Don't play that game in my face. Now do it to somebody else, but don't do that to me. So that's a thing as well. Um, I'm not a silent sufferer. The next thing, my ideas and my vision be became an intimidation for other people. Um, I knew that entrepreneurship was for me when I realized that the things that I wanted or I wanted to do or achieve became a, a point of contention for people. After I shared my vision or my innovation or my ideas, people would like act different with me. Like, oh, she got a brain of her own. How dare you? That's when I knew, oh, this ain't for me. Because see, I'm doing this because I have to pay bills, but I don't really have to share this space with you because I can choose a different job, right? I can pick a different outcome. I can go somewhere different. And when you realize that you're a threat to people who don't have their own ideas or their own, you know, vision for their lives, that's when you realize mm, this may not be the setting for a person like me. Okay. And last but not least, I knew that I could make money doing anything and I wasn't stuck. Huge point because my husband is the main reason that I felt like this about corporate America. I don't have to do what I'm doing here with you, right? It was that freedom of mind. Even when we didn't have the resources or the money and we were really living paycheck to paycheck, he used to always say, if I would complain about my job, just quit, why don't, why, quit. And I'd be like, quit? What I'm gonna do if I don't do this? Cause you freelancing. You out here frolicking and learning how to do what you are doing. So that money wasn't consistent. But you're going to tell me to quit my job, which is a consistent paycheck. So it always blew my mind that he felt like that. And he would say that to me. But he was so serious. And I I grew to accept that freedom from him. Like, as my husband, he was like, you ain't got to go back. Don't go back tomorrow. I'm like, bro, rent though. But it was the freedom of mind to just be like, you can go do something else. If you don't like that and you're complaining about it every day or every week, Go find another job or don't work that job. It doesn't matter, Christian, but you're the one that's complaining and not changing anything. And so I adopted that. I don't have to do what I'm doing here with you or for you. I can leave. I'm not stuck here. And that's what you have to get out of your mind first, that you're stuck in that place. You're stuck in that job or that career or that environment. You're not stuck. 
You're not. The moment you decide you want something different and this is no longer serving you, you are free to move about the cockpit. Not the cockpit. You're free to move about the aircraft. You're free to move about the aircraft. The moment that sticks in your mind and you accept that as your truth, you will open up so many possibilities for yourself because you're no longer living or existing out of a scarcity mindset that if I don't, this will happen. Or if I do this, I won't be able to do that. That's how you end up somewhere for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years into retirement and sickness and death. And you have not done anything you wanted to do because you stayed there out of uh, fear and you did exercise your, your options out of freedom. So I never stayed anywhere that I didn't feel like I was free. Um, I always knew that I could do something different and I did. And I'm so glad that I did that. Um, and it's funny because now that I look back on it in entrepreneurship, I am so cognizant and I'm so intentional to make sure I'm not any of I'm not guilty of any of those things on my list. I live my life based off of my experiences. I don't like to do to others what have been what has been done to me. I don't like that. I think in every situation, how would I feel? How did I feel when somebody did this to me? Now that I have team members and employees, I call them team members, but for tax purposes, they're employees. When I think about my team members and I interact with them, I don't micromanage them. I don't go in there in the room where they're doing production or whatever. What are you doing? How many did you get done? How fast? What is this looking like? Where are we on this? Why haven't you done that? After I give a task in the morning, after our group, uh, after our team meetings, and I give everybody what they need to do in the, the goal for production or the goal for, you know, uh, distribution or whatever, go do it. I see y'all later. And I go to my desk. I go in my office or sometimes I leave, right? Or sometimes I send out to my production manager what needs to be done and, and, and he can, you know, give it out to the people, to the other team members. I'm not micromanaging because I don't like being micromanaged. If you show me that you are not able to do what you've been assigned, then we're going to have a conversation about that. But I'm not going to breathe down your neck to make you feel like, right, you're in some kind of uh, incompetent boot camp. That's a setup for you to fail because I'm believing that you will by watching you like a hawk. So I don't do that. I don't mismanage people. I don't hurt people's feelings. I'm not a power hungry, crazy person. I mind my business. I expect you to mind yours. I make sure that you have what you need to do your job well, and I let you do it. I don't flex on people. I don't remind people that I own anything or that I'm the, the boss. That's, that's whack. I'm not doing that. I don't talk about one associate or employer or team member to the other. That's whack. Like y'all have y'all relationships with each other. That has nothing to do with me. I'm not out here trying to uh, compensate or over, you know, uh, over heighten or blow myself up, inflate myself in the presence of my team members. Be me, be me, do what I'm here to do. And I'm gonna let you do what you're here to do. Make it a safe, healthy environment for everyone. That's why when I've had uh, team members, when we've had team members that have to, you know, leave or they get another job or they move out of state. We had one young lady who actually graduated from college and she went on to work in Washington. Now, she can work in the White House, but she worked like in an extension of the White House for like the black social studies or something like that. Amazingly smart young lady. Amazingly smart. Okay. Stood in my office crying because she had to leave. Working with me. I don't like to say for me, working with me. Because I wouldn't have what I have now. The success wouldn't be what it is now if it wasn't for the people who have worked with me. Crying that she has to go to Washington to work for the White House. Because she felt like she was leaving us behind. Like she was going to be, you know, leaving us and, and, and she, she did not want to disappoint. She didn't want to leave us high and dry. She was like, I can see if I can find somebody to take my place. Like maybe a cousin in need work. I was like, don't worry about it. And I told her, what you have experienced here, let this be evidence and proof that wherever you go next, this is how you're supposed to be treated. With respect, your opinion and your voice matters. You should have peace in your work environment and anything that bothers that peace or that is not right, stand up against it. 
What I've been to you is a demonstration of what is possible and what should be. Nobody should cause you problems while you're making a living. So it's not about showing off, right? And being the boss and being a bitch. It's about being real, being authentic, being evidence and being inspiration that this is normal. This is natural. We can exist in each other's space and not be catty or be problematic or be toxic. That can happen, right? So anybody who's left can come back. You want part-time work? Sure. I just got an email a couple of weeks ago from another woman. Um, she's like on a, a, a program where she kind of has a disability, a learning disability, or a, um, a disability where she doesn't, uh, what can I, how can I say this? Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She has a disability. And so she worked with us for almost two years and she got another job. And so she went to that job and it's so beautiful because her and her mother always would send me texts, would always send me long texts and emails about how they miss me. They miss our business. You know, she talks about it all the time because she's an old elder woman, older woman. I think she was 54, 56 and her mom is like in her 70s and she lives with her mom because she needs a guardian. So her mom was all is still always buying our products, always ordering. I think we just shipped the order out for her mom the other day with like 16 products. And they sent an email because she's now looking for work again. I guess the other job didn't work out, but she wants to know if she can come back to work with us. Absolutely. Because there's no problems over here, right? It's family, it's love, but that stems from within. So I knew entrepreneurship was for me based off of those points, based off of knowing the kind of person I am and the kind of environment not only I wanted, but that I wanted to create for others. And I am so grateful to God that I've been blessed to create that um, authentically, consistently, and transparently. It's not to be fake. It's not to be phony. It's not for accolades, but it's simply knowing that the environment that I have been able to grow and, and, and bloom and blossom in is the same environment I want others to be able to experience as well confidently and consistently and it can be done um but you have to work through a lot of things you have to be able to manage your expectations and manage your power to the best of your ability because we all have power uh we just have to make sure that we're good stewards of that and that we're consistent and that we're kind and that we always always engage with the best and the greatest intentions for all of those who come in to uh an encounter with us and that's what i want i want people to experience as much of christ as possible right because my name is christian which is to be christ-like child but um that's the light that i've been blessed to share and i'm grateful to be here in entrepreneurship and to share this with other people so consider those points think about those things do you relate to any of them let me know in the comment section below do you not like micromanaging do you not like misuse of power do you not like being going along with the flow just to get along you know or um do you run into people who are intimidated by your innovation and your ideas? I would love to hear that. Oh my gosh, I've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys have to like it, subscribe to the channel. I love to add you to my two cents crew. Until next time, I'll see you guys later in the next video. Take care, be kind, show love, and experience all the greatness in the love, okay? Bye.